Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. If possible, differentiate with respect to x. Part A. Y equals ln of x cubed times sine x over the square root of x to the 5 plus 4. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Let's write down the function again. ln of x cubed times sine of x over the square root of x to the 5 plus 4. Now, you should know that when you differentiate a log, it's the derivative of what's inside divided by what was inside. But, there is a simpler way that we can do this because to find the derivative of this function here, it's quite complicated. It involves products and quotients. So, if we look carefully, we can use some of our log laws to help us to simplify this expression into something that's easily differentiated. So we know that when we have a quotient, we can break this up into a difference. So we get this minus log of what's on the bottom, x to the 5 plus 4. Okay, now here we have a product, and so we can break that up into a sum. So we have ln of x cubed plus ln of sine x minus ln of x to the 5 plus 4. And when we take the square root, that's the same as raising to the power 1 half. So let me write it like this. Okay, now there's one more thing that we can do to simplify this to as simple as we can get it. We can bring down all these powers as coefficients. So, when we have a power inside our log, we can bring it down as a coefficient, and so let's do that. We're going to have 3 times ln of x plus ln of sine x minus a half, which is the power here, times ln of x to the 5 plus 4. Okay, now we can go ahead and differentiate these because these are much simpler to differentiate than this original function here. So dy on dx is going to be 3. Now the derivative of x is 1. So we're going to have 3 times 1 over x plus the derivative of sine is cosine. So we're going to have cos x on the original function, sine x, and here we're going to have a half multiplied by the derivative of x to the 5 plus 4 is going to be, bring down the power, it's going to be 5x to the 4, of course when we differentiate 4 it's 0, because it's just a constant, divided by the original one, x to the 5 plus 4. Okay, so let's tidy this up a little bit more, we're going to have here, it's just going to be 3 over x, plus, well, cos over sine is going to be cotangent, or cot, so cot x, and here, well, there's not much we can simplify, it's going to be 5x to the 4, over 2 into x to the 5 plus 4. Okay, and this here is our final derivative. So as you can see, when we apply some of our log laws, it makes it much easier to simple, to differentiate something which wasn't so simple to start off with. So you can see, it would have been quite difficult to differentiate this and then divide it by this function. Here we can get a much easier uh, answer. It's going to be the same answer, but it's a much easier process to get to it. Okay, let's have a look at part B. y equals ln of 4 minus x squared plus ln of x minus 5. Now, let's go back and read the question carefully. If possible, differentiate with respect to x. And then it gives you these two functions. Now, the reason I've decided to do this question in a video is because I find it very interesting. This type of question, although it seems quite harmless, really can separate the people who do blind computations, or the students who do blind computations 
as opposed to those who really think about the questions and think about the functions that are in the questions. Let's have a look at this. We have our function as ln of 4 minus x squared, and we have ln of x minus 5. So, first of all, what do we know about ln, or logs in general? Well, what's inside a log? It must always be greater than 0. Otherwise, the log is undefined. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll be working with complex numbers, which we don't study in the 2 or 3 not courses. So, what we know. We know that 4 minus x squared must be greater than 0. And we know that x minus 5 is also greater than 0. Okay, now let's go ahead and solve these two inequalities. Now this one's quite easy to solve. We can add 5 to both sides and get x is greater than 5. Here let's draw the parabola. So it's going to cross at 2 and minus 2. And where is it greater than 0? Whoops, this should be the other way around. This is upside down parabola. Okay, so you can see... Yeah, this should be an upside down parabola. And you can see where's it greater than zero? It's positive in these regions between minus two and two. So the solution here is going to be minus two is less than x, which is less than two. Okay, so let's try and find the domain of this function. So the domain must be all values of x which satisfy these two conditions. So when we draw our number line, Let's say that this is 0, this is 2 here, this is 5, and this is minus 2. What do we have from here? We have all the numbers lying in that region, or that interval. But from here we have all the numbers that are lying in this region. And you can see there's no overlap of x values. So therefore, this function, which looks quite harmless, this function doesn't even exist. If you were to try to graph this function, it's not possible. So, the point of this question is to always look at your functions. And I know there's not much time in exams to really look and think hard about the functions. But sometimes exams throw questions in like this to see if you're really thinking about your functions instead of just doing straight computations and finding derivatives without actually thinking about it. Okay, so in this question, we can't find a derivative of this function. Why? Since it doesn't exist. Okay, so need to be a little bit careful sometimes when you're working with logs because we have these sort of problems that can come up. So this question is really out there to separate the band 6 or E4 students from the other students. Okay, thanks for watching.